The silence leveling method, arguably the fastest leveling method in Warframe. A lot of people have asked me about this method and I decided to make an updated in-depth guide. There are a lot of people that do elite sanctuary onslaught or normal sanctuary onslaught but I personally find the silence leveling method the best. If you find other leveling methods better for yourself then by all means go ahead. This is for those of you who are interested in doing this method. It's faster, you don't have to rely on someone nuking in your squad, no host migration, no lag, just you speedrunning. Just a quick disclaimer, the silence leveling method requires a Helmuth segment as well as the Kuva Brammer to work. Please keep this in mind. This method is for players who are MR8 and above. You will also need to get Sebagoth Subsume Gloom if you want to use this method for leveling up your weapons. So this method will require some grinding and some setup to make it efficient. This video will be split into two. The first part explaining leveling frames, the second part explaining how to level weapons. So what is this silence leveling method I speak of? Well, in Warframe, when you kill an enemy that has not detected you, you get a stealth affinity or XP boost. Remember, XP in Warframe is just called affinity. Each enemy kill while being undetected gives you 100%. This XP bonus goes up to 500%. Believe it or not, you can actually stealth kill in Warframe. I know, what a shocker in the run and gun playstyle everyone has. There are three stages of enemy alertedness. One, undetected. On the map, all the enemies will have an arrow icon with just the outline. This means that enemies are oblivious. Two, semi-alerted. This means that the enemies have heard something. They don't know where you are, but they're looking around for you. This is an outline with a smaller arrow in the middle. And three, alerted. This is a full arrow and the enemies are on demon mode. And well, with this method, if you have an affinity booster, which is double XP, plus 500% XP boost per enemy killed, you can imagine how fast this will level up your frames and weapons. This method will on average max your frames or weapons in about two minutes steady, which is about one run. If you get unlucky and you don't max it out in one run, you'll have to do another run, but that just means you can level it up a little bit and leave, or you can continue doing the run and getting all the loot, However, this is with an affinity booster. Without one, you'll have to do about two runs to max your frame out. So how do we make sure when we kill the enemies, we remain undetected? Silence, the most important part of this leveling method. The ability silence is from Banshee. This method cannot be done without this ability. This ability stuns enemies for two seconds. The enemies affected by this aura are deafened, so they cannot hear any gunshots or noises. So if the enemies are not alert and you stun them with silence, then proceed to kill them, you will get the stealth affinity bonus multiplier. But, a big but. For some reason in Warframe, when the enemy is stunned by silence and they are facing you, even though they are not alerted and you kill them, you will lose your stealth affinity multiplier. I don't get it either. You would think that because they are stunned, it wouldn't remove it, but it does remove it. And this is where the augment for silence, savage silence, comes in. Ignoring what the augment does, there's a little hidden mechanic within this augment which is not outright spoken about. It removes that issue of removing the affinity multiplier when killing an enemy facing you. This allows you to constantly keep up that XP multiplier. So this means when you are leveling your frames, silence has to be subsumed and you have to make use of savage silence for this method to work. This will also mean you need the Holman segment, for this method to work like I mentioned in the disclaimer earlier. Luckily, Banshee isn't the hardest frame to farm, she is a doja frame. We need one more thing for this farm, a Kuva Brammer. Once you complete the wall within, you will get access to Kuva weapons. Farm yourself a Kuva Brammer with the Toxin element. If you don't get Toxin, it's not the end of the world as these enemies are low level so you just need flat damage and you'll be good to go. The reason we need a Brammer is because of the huge amounts of AoE the Brammer gives. If you pair it with Firestorm or Primed Firestorm, you're going to get even more AoE, so the Brammer is the perfect weapon for this farm, as you want to kill groups of enemies as fast as possible before the silent stun finishes. Now, I know the ammo nerf hit the Brammer heavily. I mean, we only have five base ammo, and I also know that people have been complaining that they can't sustain their ammo when doing this method, but we will go over that in a second. You can, in theory, use the Kuva Tonko or Zar, but personally, I'd recommend the Brammer. So let's go over the builds quickly. For your Warframe, whichever frame you plan on leveling up or formering, you need to subsume silence over your first ability. The reason we do this is because let's say it's a brand new frame, no former, nothing. You haven't unlocked all of your abilities, but you will have your first ability unlocked, obviously. 
So that's why we subsume the first ability. So we have access to silence straight away. I would recommend subsuming silence onto config C or whatever config you are not using as this is just a leveling build. It's not something you'll be using in normal missions. After you have subsumed, you want to do the following. Put on Sabbath Silence, that is the most important mod. Then you want to build for duration as much as you can. You want to make use of Continuity, Augur Message, Nera's Hatred, and Constitution. Now I know lower MR players won't have all of these mods, but as you start to progress and unlock them, you can start adding them to your leveling builds. The most important thing is just getting as much duration as you possibly can. Then you want to add stretch, just stretch for the 45% range. And this is because if you stack too much range, you won't have time to reach the enemies before the stun runs out, and then they will be alerted when you kill them, thus losing your XP multiplier bonus. So you want to have just 145 as this is the sweet spot that I have found. If you find that's still too far and you're not getting to the enemies, you can switch it out for Augur Reach and get only 130%, but this means you have to get up close and personal and time your shots. Of course, any aura you have available that matches the polarity so you get more capacity. Now this build here that you're looking at is for those of you who have an Oricon Reactor installed and an aura slot matching the polarities. For those of you that don't have an Oricon Reactor, or for example, if you're a lower MR player and when you form a summon, you don't have as much capacity, try to match the aura and use the mods that you can until your capacity is full. For the lower MR players, you can actually just match the aura slot and then you can just put on continuity, stretch and Sabbath silence. Those three mods and you will be good to go. It just means that you will need to recast silence more often. If you are a later game player and you have arcanes, Molt Efficiency and RK Nullifier are the two best ones to run here. RK Nullifier, because the tile set we are running has those <clears throat> lovely door sensors. These door sensors drain all of your energy with magnetic, so RK Nullifier is really helpful here. And of course, if you're a super late game player and you have Prime Shift footed, be sure to use that as well. This leads me onto another big issue with this farm, Knockdown. Because we are using the Brammer, you shoot one shot and you get knocked back pretty much all the time. This is not optimal. No, 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 no. We want to speedrun. The previous guide I made, I stated you must use Surefooted and Power Drift, but I was wrong. The best way to be immune to knockdown is Unairu. The very first node in the middle is called Poise. Poise is quite literally just Prime Surefooted, so if you haven't upgraded it, now's the time. At max rank, when you yoink yourself out of your frame into your operator, you get 40 seconds of knockdown immunity. This is really easy to refresh as you're running the mission and you can just quickly go in and out of your operator refreshing the timer. This is nice because we no longer have to waste mod slots and so on, it just comes from our focus school. Obviously, if you have Prime Show footed, poise no longer applies to you. So that concludes knockdown. But this right here, the frame build is the perfect template. This is all you need to make this leveling method work. Every frame you subsume silence of your one, and this is what the build must kind of look like, depending on what you have and how much capacity you have available. Of course, mine is prime show footed if you don't have it. The reason we don't run narrow minded is because it messes up the range and then you have to spend way more mods trying to get more range up and it's just, it's not worth it. You don't need flow or anything else as you are just casting one ability silence, that's it. I'd also recommend bringing a few energy pads in case something goes wrong or you don't have arcane nullifier. Now let's move on to the Brammer build. These enemies are only level 22 to 24, so you don't need to go crazy with this build. All you need in this order is flat damage, fire rate, firestorm so you get more AoE, multi-shot, and then if you're running a toxin, you can slap on cold for viral. Because of the ammo nerf, we run ammo drum. This brings our ammo maximum to nine, which is a lot better than five in this case. I know what you guys are thinking. I do run hush here. Even though savage silence or actually silence makes your weapons go silent. The reason I do this is because many times I shoot at a group and I forget to recast silence for a split second. If you don't have hush, well, you will alert the groups around you and further on and then all the enemies will be alerted and you won't gain your stealth XP bonus. So Hush is just a little safety net as these enemies are low levels so you have an option to have an extra utility mod. You need, not an option, need to have an ammo mutation mod for this to work. Even if you don't unlock the Exodus slot, remove one of the mods in the build to add it, it is absolutely vital for this to work, whether that's arrow mutation or vigilante supplies. If you are in Steel Path, run Primary Merciless. But the early MR players run something like this. In order, focus on serration, ammo drum, firestorm, fire rate, split chamber, and then of course an ammo mutation mod. Then fill out the build as you form or get the mods. 
That concludes the Brammer builds. Now companions. The best companion you can have is a Smeeter because we'll be making use of Charm in hopes of getting the double XP buff, which of course is ideal and it's OP because then you can max a frame in like 1 minute 30 seconds. But if you don't have a Smeeter, use whatever companion you have and focus on getting Vacuum or Fetch because you need to be able to pull the ammo in so you can sustain your ammo better. It doesn't matter what build you run, just make sure that if you are using a Smeeter, use Charm and Fetch. And then on any other companion, make sure it either has Fetch or Vacuum on it. That's pretty much it for the preparation for leveling your frames. In summary, you need Silence on your frame, a Brammer, a Nairu for Knockdown, and preferably a Smeeter or any companion. I would recommend making a Loadout option, calling it leveling, which is what I did. All I do then is just change the frame as I permanently have the Brammer on the right config as well as a Smeeter and Unairu. It just makes it a lot easier to switch out the frames and things like that. So which mission do we actually run? In Star Chart, there are two tile sets you can run, Telesto or Adaro. Personally, I think Telesto is way better because it's a more straighter tile set. It's very linear, so it's kind of just move in one direction and then you'll land up right by extraction. Adara, on the other hand, gets a little confusing. There's vents, pipelines, left, right. It's just, no. Adara technically gives you more XP because the enemies are higher level. But still, Telesto is more than enough and I prefer it. On top of that, Telesto is not only a great XP farm, but an absolutely amazing passive Oricon Cell farm. For those of you who have been needing Oricon Cells, well, here is one of the best ways to get passive Oricon Cells while leveling. So you are killing two birds with one stone here. If you are running a resource booster alongside your affinity booster, you can easily pull in 4 to 8 Oricon cells per run depending on your luck. This is another reason why I prefer Telesto. For this guide, I'm going to go over Telesto only as that's the only tile set that I run. So let's walk you through how to do each run with some tips and tricks. In this example run, I am using Excalibur. When you load in, the first thing you do is cast Silence. There are going to be frames like Excalibur where you might not have enough energy initially to cast Silence. Here is where the energy pad comes in. But for the most part, you should be okay, especially if you're leveling or formering primed frames. Always keep Silence on and your goal is to kill the enemies when they are affected by Silence. Make sure that they are affected by Silence. This is very important as this will help you keep up your 500% stealth bonus at all times. It's pretty straightforward in the sense it's just an exterminate. I don't need to walk you through how to do an exterminate, I hope. Now here is where the tips and tricks come into play, so follow along carefully. Like I mentioned, make sure silence is active at all times. Keep an eye on the duration of this ability. Remember, you have two seconds to kill the enemy when they are affected by silence. So you have to move fast, you can't really stop and just chill, constantly bullet jump and roll to move swiftly. Another important thing when it comes to silence is to make sure that you don't kill them too early. What I mean by this is make sure that you get close enough to the group so that they are all stunned and then kill them. Another example of losing your stealth bonus is when you have only stunned half the group and you shoot and the remaining enemies of the group get alerted meaning you lose the XP multiplier. I know I'm repeating myself but the way to make sure you keep it up is make sure that every enemy is affected by silence. As you do this method, you'll begin to learn the range and know when they are going to be stunned. If you are struggling for ammo, this is easier said than done, but don't spam. Pick and plan your shots carefully. For example, shoot one shot in a group of enemies killing more than three or four enemies. That way you can guarantee and get an ammo drop back. You will run into times where you have to shoot one enemy, but that's okay. The group should make up for it. Just as long as you don't shoot three times to kill two enemies, you'll be good. If there is ever a time where you're just super unlucky and you get no ammo drops even after killing enemies, as fast as you can hop out and kill some enemies with your operator and then get some ammo and move on. I tend to run with my map open, this way I can easily see where the enemies spawn and which direction to go. There are two things to watch out for. One, if an enemy gets alerted and you miss that enemy. The first thing an alerted enemy does is bolt for the alarm. If the alarm goes off, you stuff up the whole run because all the enemies will be alerted, which means no stealth bonus. You can sometimes get lucky and switch off the alarm really quickly. It just means that the next room will have alerted enemies and then the room after that will return to unaware enemies. But if you're not quick enough, well, you will stuff up the run. So bottom line is make sure to kill every enemy you see so that they don't trip the alarm. 
Your worst enemies in this farm are Eximus units, Noxes, and Rollers. Especially Rollers. I hate them. These enemies are not affected by silence, so they are the ones that usually drop your stealth XP bonus. If you are quick enough to kill them, it should not be a problem, but be really careful with Noxes and Rollers. They are the worst. It's best to try and take them out as fast as possible. So if you notice your stealth affinity bonus just randomly disappearing, it's likely because one or two enemies spotted you or it's those enemies that I've just mentioned. That's pretty much it for when it comes to leveling your frames. Remember, this method can be done for any frame you want, whether you're leveling it for the first time or formering it multiple times. It's also a really good way to quickly get your frames up for mastering. Before we move on to the weapons, I do want to quickly mention that subsuming Thermal Sunder on your frames and then heading to Sanctuary Onslaught is another great alternative to the silence leveling method, if you simply just don't want to deal with all the setup for the silence leveling method. It's really simple, subsume Thermal Sunder, build for strength, range, efficiency and preferably equilibrium for energy sustain, head on over to Sanctuary Onslaught and just spam your one. Although I will say sometimes without Energize you may struggle so use other alternatives like Energy Nexus or you can build for more efficiency if you are a lower MR player. This works really well because remember if you kill enemies with frames abilities, 100% of the XP goes to the frame, which is why generally you want to kill enemies with your frames abilities to level them faster. Now let's move on to weapons. Normally, leveling weapons in ESO is fast enough, but again, post migration, no one nuking and so on and so on. So this method is for those of you who just could not be asked and want to level up their weapons quickly and by yourself. It's quite literally the exact same method except we actually use Banshee now instead of subsuming Banshee. Banshee will be our leveling frame for your weapons. However, we subsume Gloom onto Banshee which is Severgoth's ability. Subsume Gloom over Banshee's fourth ability and then the build looks something like this. We focus on a bit of everything. The new Precision Intensifier is great for boosting Gloom's strength if you have Arcane Energize, use that. If not, run something like Molt Efficiency. Arcane Nullifier is a must-have here. Generally, as an MRA player, you're not going to have Arcane Energize or some of these mods, so you can either just do ESO and work towards this build, then switch over when you can make it, or make it a little bit more budget to what you have and what you have available, if you would like. But it is important to get as much strength into Gloom as possible to give it the maximum slow. Now the question you're probably asking is, why Gloom? Gloom goes hand in hand here with Silence. So Silence by itself has a 2 second stun, which is actually really quick. Gloom will slow down this animation drastically, up to 85% with this build. This allows you to have way more time to kill the enemies effectively making sure you will always keep up the stealth affinity bonus. This is especially helpful for melee weapon leveling. I will say because Gloom is a channel ability that drains your energy, I would highly recommend popping one or two energy pads depending on your build before casting it so you can sustain your energy a bit more. This will work with any weapon you want to level. For primary weapons I tend to do a leveling build in this order. Flat damage, fire rate, reload speed, crit chance, crit damage and multi shot. If you're in steel path and you have access to primary merciless or deadhead, definitely use those. This is an example for a primary build here. This is the exact same for secondaries as well, in that order it's just, it's exactly the same. But for melees it's a little different. We focus on flat damage, attack speed, range, range is really important here, crit chance and crit damage. In terms of doing the actual mission it's the same thing as if you are leveling a frame, except it's your weapon now. But because of gloom you have more leeway. You obviously still need to be quick as you don't have AoE so now it's dependent on the weapon. We went for range when using melee weapons so we can kill groups easier. I generally slide attack so I can get more range out of my hits. Weapons do generally level faster than frames so if you practice this method a bit you should be able to max out your weapons in one run no problem. And honestly that is the silence leveling method. I would recommend running an affinity booster and when it comes to using your companion again the same a smita if you can or any other frame will work. Obviously, lower MR players won't be able to follow all the mods that I have added here in the builds, so just use what you have available. Yes, there is a little bit of a setup, a bit of grinding to get this method to work, but I really enjoy running this method as generally it's faster than any other leveling method in Warframe. Plus, once you have everything, it's done for your entire game. It's at your disposal. So it's a little bit of work for something that's going to make your life a lot easier, especially when you're leveling because it gets terrible. Formering the same thing over and over again 
times in that by however many frames or weapons you want to form it. It's, it's a lot. A lot. So this method kind of eases the pain in my opinion. If I had to sit in ESO and form all the frames that I have formed, I would have gone insane by now personally. This method has saved me a lot of time and I would really recommend putting in a bit of work to get this method. I don't have much more to say. Have fun leveling up your weapons and frames nice and fast. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And of course, a huge thank you to our channel members who support me. Thank you so much. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.